deposits you have. Deposit, you think? Mm -hmm. That first quarter, the candle did get blown out, leaving the 10 and 11 year old boy in complete and total cave darkness. So they started screaming, crying, wetting their pants, running back down the manor tube, telling everybody that they had found a haunted cave. And nobody believed them just because it was a bunch of little kids beside one man. One man by the name of George Snyder. Now, George Snyder again had back up here the next day with the pickaxe and shovel and started digging. And on his third day of digging, he did break the canopy hall that we are in right now. Now, canopy hall is the largest room that we're going to be in today, and it's about 200 feet long and 65 feet tall. So, if you guys look right up above my hand right here, we have stalactites. Now, an easy way to remember that is they hold tight to the ceiling. But behind me right over here, we have a still at night. Now, an easy way to remember that is you might trip over it if you're not looking. But the formation that we're going to be seeing the most of today is right behind everybody over here. And this is our flow stuff. So throughout the whole tour today, we are going to have handrails right next to us. I do ask everybody to warm to you guys' handrails for me and watch your guys' step. And if you want to... I can't touch it, but... We are in reception hall right now. How you doing, babe? Look. I know. Look. I know. So on the original tours for about five years, they didn't have any of those rules of no touching or anything. So people would just come in here. And your tour guide used to tell you to go up to the formation that you thought was the coolest. Break your hand. Put your hand on it. Break it off. Back then, they did not know that it took such a long time for everything to go around here. I thought it grew like icicles. So, if you guys see any broken formations, fortunately, that's when it's from. Is everybody in the back caught up? So, I think this cave used to be filled with them. Yeah. 
I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. George Jeffries was sitting right here where I'm standing taking a break before he headed back up to the top. The longest stalactite here to cave the winds. Everybody, can anybody guess how long that guy is? A little bit more than that. Pretty close though. About eight and a half feet is the length of that guy right there. But can anybody guess the name of him? The name of him is actually the longest stalactite here to cave the winds. So if you guys look right at the book, my hand right here with the stalactites are just growing out of the limestone. That is a lifeline. And that is how our cave here did get life. So, 500 million years ago, Colorado was an ocean with all the sea creatures when sea urchins died, fall into the bottom of the ocean, they did create the limestone that we see around us now. But about 70 million years ago, the tectonic plate shifted, caused the Rocky Mountains to form, also causing a bunch of cracks inside this limestone, which did a lot of rainwater to get through. Rainwater has carbonic acid in it, the carbonic acid did erode away the passageways that we were in. Anybody guess what carbonic acid is in? It's in soda, so you guys can be. So everybody, this is the part of the tour where I try to sell you guys another tour. If you look right behind me here, we have our lantern tour. It is a mile and a half long and an hour and a half. Now we do have all original cave flooring in there. No electricity in the cave whatsoever. The only light source that you guys would get is this lantern that you see right here in my hand. And most of the time on that tour, they're trying to scare you guys with a bunch of ghost stories from the 1880s. So that is for kids six years and above. Now if I could get everybody to turn off all your light emitting devices.
there is an exception right in front of us here. We do have our polished flowstone, also known as cave onyx or banded travertine. So if you guys look at the darker layers, that is the iron oxide, and the lighter layers is the calcite. And instead, if you rub it for two to three seconds, you get 30 seconds of good luck. But unfortunately, that's not enough time to run it to Cripple Creek. But it is enough time to make it on my 19 shin splinting stairs of doom. So if you guys want to give this guy a good rub right here for two to three seconds, you get your 30 seconds of good luck. Hold on to your hand rubs, watch your step, and follow me. Oh, we don't. We're going to go to bed, though. Yeah. Yeah. First was the Ray Caverns, Virginia, and the second was Glenwood Springs, Colorado. That's a one lot light bulb up there, everybody. So how many of you guys remember my friend Old Bruiser? Yeah. Yeah. We have his brothers up here, Ping and Pong. If you meet Ping, you will meet Pong. Ping Pong, Ping Pong. Very vicious sport, very fun to watch, not fun to play. Is everybody here in the back now? Yes. Awesome. So does everybody remember that wooden and rope ladder I showed you guys at the beginning of our tour? Yeah. If you were to climb up that, you'd pop your head out right over here behind all of us. But to get into the room that we're in right now, you'd have to go down another ladder and back up another one. So in 1910, if you weren't married by the time you were 18 and 19, you were considered an old maid. Now, we did have two old maids come on our tour here in 1910, and they did all that work to get into this room that we are in right now. Whenever they got in here, they weren't very disappointed with their food guys, but they started around. And they realized there was nothing in here to look at. So they asked their tour guide if they could leave their two favorite hairpins up here on the wall so they had something to look at next time they came to the cave. Their tour guide said, yes, that's perfectly fine, but we are glad that you guys want to do that. Again, they just said they wanted something to look at next time they came. So in fact, they did return to the cave about a year later, married a very rich and wealthy, healthy man. They give it all to this wall right here. Now they said if you throw something up there and you make it, you get a year of good luck and a marriage in your family. But if you throw something up there, it falls off or knocks something else off, that's two years of bad luck and a divorce in your family. Now for you married couples on my tour, it is considered cheating if you just chuck it at the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, I'm standing on our Hallelujah staircase right now. Now the reason it's called our Hallelujah staircase is because it's our last set of stairs on the tour today. So whenever we get to the bottom, we ask that everybody yell Hallelujah as loud as you guys can. Hold on to your guys' handrails, watch your step, and we'll follow me this way. We're going to head on down to Jeff vs. Owens. Does anybody have any questions for me? Awesome, follow me this way, guys. Hold on to your handrails, and as soon as we get to the bottom, yell Hallelujah as loud as you guys can for me. And remember that left hand turn for me, and follow me this way. 